This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Have your Bibles ready, and after I pray... I will deliver another message in the series, and I'm delivering the last message on the various prophetic days in the Bible. We're going to talk about the judgment day today. Now, there is no such thing as a general resurrection or a general judgment. It is absolutely necessary to understand the prophetic days in the Bible if we understand Revelation, and if we rightly divide the word of truth, And if we are able to see the wonderful, comforting hope of the rapture of the church and the removal of God's people from this earth before the tribulation, lead us, our Father, in Jesus' name, amen. In 2 Thessalonians, there is a passage, I read this several broadcasts ago, a passage that has led some Bible students astray concerning the rapture of the church and the revealing of the Antichrist. In Second Thessalonians 2, 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together in him. Now that is the rapture, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day, as the day of Christ is at hand. Now, when I said back here that the rapture, that is, when the saints of God are gathered together, that is the rapture. Now, this day of Christ here is not the day of the rapture. In the Greek language, Bible scholars, the greatest that have ever lived, tell us that this should read the day of the Lord. Now, there are many people who say that it doesn't make any difference whether it reads day of the Lord, day of Christ, day of Jesus, day of God, but it does make a difference. It does make a difference. The names given to God all have a meaning. The Old Testament has many. And the names of Christ all have a very definite meaning. Jesus, for instance, means Savior. Christ is his name of deity. Now, the days of prophecy and the days in the Bible have a very definite and distinct meaning, and we have no right to take these various days and make them mean what we want them to mean to prove our doctrine. The Antichrist will not be revealed to the church. The Antichrist will be unveiled after the rapture of the church. Now that is clear to anyone who is not attempting to prove a Bible point, or I should say a point of doctrine, or to defend a minister or a church or a program. Now, I'm not defending anyone or anything. I am proclaiming the unadulterated Word of God. I'm not defending any denomination, any minister, or any program or anything else. Now, here the day of the Lord will not come except the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, and so forth. And here, the scripture here is used by some to attempt to prove that the Antichrist will be revealed to the church, and the church will see him. No, we're looking for Christ, not Antichrist. Now then, the day of the Lord is described minutely, In the Word of God, I cannot give you all the scriptures. I would not attempt to give you all the scriptures that uh, refer to the day of the Lord. Let me give you just a couple. Then I want to give you some scriptures on the day of God. The day of God. The day of God and the day of the Lord are not identical. They are not one and the same, as you'll see if you'll stay with me through the rest of this broadcast. Now in Isaiah 10, verse 20, And it came, and it shall come, rather, and it shall come to pass in that day, that day. You read statements like that all through the Bible, all right? What day? Let's see what day. 
that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though my people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall not smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease and mine anger in their destruction. The Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, listen, beloved. Jesus will come first in the rapture for his church, the marriage of the Lamb and the New Testament bride, the New Testament church, the bride of Christ. The marriage of the Lamb and the bride will take place in the heaven just above us. Then the marriage supper, and then we will return, and Jesus will be anointed King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he'll reign right here upon this earth. And the knowledge of the Lord and the righteousness of God will cover this earth as the waters now cover the sea. And the people, Israel, that are called back will live in peace. They, there will be peace. There will be peace on earth. And there will be worldwide peace. There will be peace such as men have talked about, have fought for, and died for, but have never never enjoyed since the serpent entered the Garden of Eden. There has never been worldwide peace since the serpent entered the Garden. Never. And there never will be until the anointed sits on the throne. Now, before that happens, there will be a time of trouble and tribulation and desolation and a time of suffering and misery. The day of the Lord, it is called, at the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of great and horrible tribulation. And except those days, Matthew 24, except those days be shortened, there would not be any flesh left upon this earth, no flesh alive whatsoever. But for the sake of Israel, God will shorten those days. How much? I don't know. No man knows. If I said two weeks, a month, a year, I would be guessing, I would be speculating, and I'm not going to do it. I don't know. No one else knows. Now, one more little passage in Amos chapter 5. I've already read this passage one time, several broadcasts ago. I read Amos 5, 16. Therefore, the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, Wailing shall be in all streets. They shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas. And they shall call the husbandman to mourning, and such as are skillful, skillful at lamentation to wailing. And in all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Now, what day did he say? What did he say? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Now, the rapture of the church is not the day of the Lord. The rapture of the church is the day when Jesus will come in the clouds, in the air, and he'll call his people up to meet him in the clouds, in the air. The day of the Lord is the time when all hell will break out upon this earth, and this earth will become a literal hell insofar as suffering is concerned. It'll be a time of misery such as has never been nor ever will be again upon this earth. 
Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. But we are told to pray for the coming of Jesus. John the, the, John the Beloved in the last chapter of Revelation uh, prays, Even so come, Lord Jesus, even so come. All right. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is, the, is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness. That's not the rapture. The day of the Lord is darkness. That is not the rapture, my friend. That is the time when people will suffer under the reign of the anti, not Christ, but anti-Christ, and misery will engulf this earth. All right, it'll be a day of darkness, and it'll not be light, even very dark, and no brightness in it. There'll be no brightness, wailing and moaning and groaning, as if a man did flee from a lion, verse 19, and a bear met him, or went into a house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even uh, very dark and no brightness in it, no brightness in it. Anyone, anyone who will read the word of God with an open mind and an open heart must admit that this could not be a word picture of the rapture, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior that Paul said, happy, blessed are they that look for that day. And we are commanded to pray for that day. No, the day of the Lord is a day of suffering, misery, anguish, woe, and bloodshed, and darkness, and there is no light in it. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Now listen to this. By the way, now let me say this, because I'm bringing to a close the messages on the days, the days. And as I said... There are nine of them mentioned in the Bible. The day of Jesus, the day of the Son, the day of Christ, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lamb, the day of God, the day of man, the day of salvation, and the day of judgment. These are all mentioned. I've not spent an entire broadcast on all of them, but I have on some of them. Today we are combining uh, the two, the day of the Lord and the day of God. Now here is a word picture of the day of God. Now listen. And to you, well, let me give you the reference. If you'd like to follow, turn quickly to Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3 and verse 19. Well, I tell you, to get the connection, let me begin with verse 13. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For in this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Now, the day of God will never cease throughout all ages. That is the eternal day. Now wait, I know that God has been from everlasting. There is an eternity behind us. God had no beginning. Eternity behind us. But the day of God, now this is time. We're living now in time. Time. Time has been running for these thousands of years. And one of these days, time will be no more. Then the day of God it will not be a 24-hour day, nor will it be a day of many weeks or months or years, but it'll be a day throughout all ages, world without end. Unto him, that is God, unto him be glory in the church, the bride of Christ, by Christ, the Son, the only begotten Son, Jesus, throughout all ages, world without end. Now, let me give you one more scripture, and then I want to make some remarks. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12, 2 Peter 3 and verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. 
looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens, new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Now, we are looking, we are hastening to and looking for, hastening to, moment by moment, yes, second by second, we are speeding on to that glorious daybreak, the daybreak of the day of Almighty God, that that time when that day breaks, when that moment, when that sun rises, in language that we can understand, the sunrise, the day of God begins. That will be an unending day. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet will be in the lake of fire. All wicked will be in the lake of fire. All sin will be in the lake of fire. All iniquity, all that mar and scar and stain will be in the lake of fire. And throughout the unending ages, the Ages of ages, eternity unending will be the day of God. There will be peace, love, righteousness, purity, joy that could never be described in the language of man. Now that is the program of our God. The days in the fullness of time, God has always caused his prophetic clock to strike. In the fullness of time, Jesus came, born of a woman. In the fullness of time, he'll come the second time and call us to meet him in the clouds in the air. At the appointed time, the day of God will begin. And all will be well from then on. There will be no more sin and sorrow. If you're born again, if you're born again, you have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to fret about. And if you're not born again, I say very frankly, you may be a multimillionaire. You may own the finest home in your county, in your state. You may be the richest man in your state. You may be the most popular man or woman, young man or young woman. But if you're not born again, you're a pauper. And you have nothing to look forward to but death and destruction. You say, Mr. Green, I'll take my chance. You're not taking a chance. You're not taking a chance. If you're listening to the gospel hour now, you have been exposed to the gospel of the grace of God. And you'll give an account. You'll give an account to God for this message and for this hour. You can be saved if you're not saved. You can be saved this very moment. Bow your head. Close your eyes and simply invite Jesus to come into your heart and take away your sin and save your soul. And he will, and you'll know it. He'll give you peace. He'll give you assurance. And you'll know that you're born again. Father, may this be the happy moment when many will be saved by grace through faith in the shed blood of the Lamb of God We ask it in his name. He's worthy. Amen.